If you're tackling electrical projects at home, or maybe you're getting some advice from an electrician, you've probably come across some terms that can be very confusing. Some of these words are similar, but they mean completely different things. Knowing these terms will help you better understand your electrical system, whether you're working on projects or if you're out purchasing electrical materials. So in this video, I'll break down 15 electrical terms that every DIYer should know. And stick around to the end because I'm going to cover two terms that people often mix up and they even require different types of electrical protection. And the first term is ungrounded conductor. The ungrounded conductor is what we often call the hot wire or the hot wires in an electrical circuit. They carry current from the power source to the load, like a light fixture or something plugged into a receptacle. Typically they're black or red in a residential setting, but in some cases they can be other colors as well. It's called the ungrounded conductor simply because it's not connected to ground. So if you hear your electrician or somebody else use this term, now you know it's the hot wire. Term number two, grounded conductor. The grounded conductor is what we commonly call the neutral wire. It completes the circuit by carrying current from the load back to the power source. It's identified by the colors white or gray and it's called the grounded conductor because it's intentionally bonded to ground at the service. But remember, the grounded conductor is not the same as the grounding conductor, which leads us to the next term on the list. You guessed it, grounding conductor. The grounding conductor is the ground wire or the equipment ground wire. Its job is safety. It provides a path for fault current to flow back to the ground and to the power source. It's usually bare copper wire or a wire with green insulation. This ground path it provides allows a circuit breaker or fuse to open during a ground fault. Did you notice I said it allows the circuit breaker to open? This is another term that can be very confusing if you're not in the electrical industry. That brings us to the fourth term on the list, open. If a circuit breaker is open, that means the breaker is turned off. No current is flowing and no voltage is present. This can happen manually if you switch the breaker off or automatically if the breaker trips due to a fault. When a water valve is open, water is flowing. And when the valve is closed, water stops flowing. It's just the opposite when we're talking about electricity and that can be confusing. The same is true for our next term, number five, closed. If a breaker is closed, the circuit is complete. Voltage is present and if there's a load connected, then current will be flowing. So remember, closed means the breaker is on and open means the breaker is off. Moving on to number six, receptacle. A receptacle is the actual device we use to plug something in. It's often confused with an outlet, but there is a key difference. Term number seven is outlet. An outlet is any point in the electrical system where current is taken to supply loads. A receptacle is a type of outlet, but so is a ceiling box used to supply a light fixture. If you do call receptacles outlets, that's fine. Many do. But a more accurate term would be the next one on the list, number eight, receptacle outlet. A receptacle outlet is a specific type of outlet designed for plug-in devices. Every receptacle is an outlet, but not every outlet is a receptacle. Many of these definitions can be found in Article 100 of the National Electrical Code. There is another type of outlet as well, which brings us to number nine, lighting outlet. Unlike a receptacle outlet, a lighting outlet is specifically designed for light fixtures. It's wired to be controlled by a switch. So whether or not it's a ceiling light, a wall sconce, or even some LED strips, the connection point is called a lighting outlet. You're not going to wanna to miss the next six electrical terms. But first, I wanna show you my E7 Plus four leg standing desk by FlexiSpot, the sponsor of today's video. I've had this desk for over a year now, and I love it. I use it all the time as a desk and as a workbench. I ordered mine with a solid wood top and some casters so I could move it around. 
but they have all sorts of accessories. It's rated for 540 pounds of static weight with 440 pounds of lifting capacity. I was shocked to see the heavy duty build. This thing is solid. The control has four height presets, or you can move the desk up and down with the arrow keys. My back hurts if I sit too long, and I found that working at a standing desk is actually more comfortable. If you want to check them out, click the link down in the video description and use code YTE7P50 for $50 off your E7 Plus four-leg standing desk. Oh, one more thing. FlexiSpa also sent me their washable rug, which is Okatech certified, so it's safe for children and pets. It has a dual non-slip design, so the pad won't slip on the floor and the rug won't slip on the pad. It can be vacuumed, but it's also machine washable. And if you purchase the desk, they offer a nice discount on the rug as well. Okay, back to the content. And the 10th electrical term is device. A device is any component in an electrical system other than a conductor that controls or carries electricity but doesn't use it. Some examples of a device would be switches, receptacles, and dimmers, just to name a few. A light fixture is not a device. It's considered equipment because it consumes power. But what about all those other components of an electrical system that don't actually connect to the wiring? Electrical term number 11, fitting. Fittings don't carry electricity, but they help with electrical installations. A few examples would be connectors, lock nuts, bushings, and conduit bodies. Think of them as the nuts and bolts that help build the system and hold everything together. Code article 100 defines fitting as part of the wiring system that's intended primarily to perform a mechanical rather than an electrical function. We also need to get those wires from one point to another, and there are a couple of ways that can be done. One of them is number 12 on the list, raceway. Raceway is just a fancy term for a tube or channel that protects electrical wiring. A few examples include conduit like PVC, EMT, ENT or RMC. Wireways are also considered a raceway. Raceways help protect wires or cables from physical damage and make future wiring changes easier. Some parts of the country, like the Chicago area, require residential wiring to be run in raceways. But there is another way to run those electrical wires and that brings us to number 13, cable. Romax, or NMB, is a common residential cable that has one or more hot, neutral, and ground wires inside. There are many other types of cable as well, such as type AC, MC, TC, and UF, just to name a few. Information and requirements for cable can be found in Chapter 3 of the NEC. Okay, just two more left. Number 14, ground fault. A ground fault is a dangerous condition where electricity strays from its intended path and takes an alternate path to ground. This is what GFCI protection is for. If a GFCI detects a ground fault at just four to six milliamps, it'll trip almost instantaneously, eliminating current flow to the fault. So if the ungrounded hot wire touches someone or something that's grounded, that's considered a ground fault. Ground faults often occur around water or wet in damp locations, which is why the code requires GFCI protection in these areas. I have a video on GFCI protection that I'll link right here, but there's another type of fault as well. Number 15, short circuit. A short circuit happens when a hot wire touches the neutral or ground directly, or if two hot wires touch each other on a 240 volt circuit. They're called short circuits because current is taking a shortcut around the circuit directly back to the source. When this happens, a sudden surge of current flows that'll quickly trip a circuit breaker or blow a fuse. In either case, a low resistance short circuit can be violent. It'll cause sparks, fires, and serious damage if the circuit isn't properly protected. And remember, a GFCI will not protect against a line-to-line -line or a line-to-neutral short circuit. 
They only detect and protect against ground faults. A circuit breaker or a fuse is our protection for a short circuit. I hope you found this information helpful. And if you did, you may want to watch this video next where I cover five ground wire connections that every DIYer needs to know. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. I'll see you on the next one.